Since everyone is talking and freaking out about Splatana Wipers' new Tenta Missiles kit, and with the new Sizzle Season 4 now less than a week away from being released on June 1st, it might help to have a few reminders on what you should do before the new season starts, and that's what this video is about. Hopefully this video helps you, whether you've been playing Splatoon 3 since launch, or if you've just recently started playing Splatoon 3, as there are a good number of things to remember before this current season ends. Once the new Sizzle Season 4 releases, we'll actually have a season for each season, fall, winter, spring, and summer, which is pretty cool. The first thing to do before the new season starts would be to finish this current season's catalog. I have a video that discusses FOMO if you're curious on what it was like before it was updated. While you can eventually earn the current fresh seasonal items from the shellout machine, it is important to keep in mind that you cannot earn or purchase seasonal gear from previous seasons. If you have your eye on certain gear that looks fresh, it's best to purchase and grind for it now as there's currently no way to earn it. However, this may change in a future update as they did with emotes and seasonal jackpots in the shellout machine. I don't believe the fresh season 3 seasonal items will be available right away either, as at the start of this season they had the drizzle season 1 seasonal items become the only one available in the shellout machine, so it's most likely that the chill season 2 items will be available in the shellout machine next as well. While it won't be going away, you should also try to snag this season's seasonal banner and titles if you have the means to do so. In case you didn't know, this is what the seasonal banner looks like, and the seasonal titles having the adjective 1 in a million, and the noun chosen one. Both are locked behind the shellout machine, so if you track your seed and see you're close to earning the seasonal banner and titles, it might be worth to grind it out now before it becomes slightly harder to obtain due to more seasonal banners and titles being added in future seasons causing it to be slightly harder to obtain a specific seasonal banner or titles, along with the order of which you receive them being random as well. Challenges are also a new limited time event mode that's set to be released with the new season. These challenges last for a whopping two hours and only occur at specific times during a season. The first upcoming challenge starts at June 3rd at 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The gimmick for this challenge seems to be everyone trying out the two new stages and making up strategies as you play through the game, along with primary gear abilities only having an effect in Turf War, meaning that secondary gear abilities won't be doing anything, so it's a relatively good way to grind ability chunks since they won't count anyways. You can prepare for this challenge ahead of time by setting your primary gear abilities now and deciding which ability you want to grind for ahead of time by drinking its respective drink in the lobby. Note that the restriction on gear abilities only applies to Turf War, not Anarchy. It's a cool gimmick, I, I guess. Similar to previous seasons, there are going to be two new main weapons, along with nine new weapon kits to previously existing weapons. So it's definitely worth it to grind until you have enough Sheldon licenses to unlock them all. These Sheldon licenses are awarded to you for raising a weapon's freshness to one star. I'd recommend playing Turf War as you can raise a weapon's freshness to 1 star pretty quickly there, and just keep swapping weapons once you're done. Also if possible, I'd recommend being level 30, since that's the current level cap to unlock every single weapon, though I, I guess that's not really necessary. The highest level you will most likely need to be in order to try out every single new weapon will most likely be level 17, as that is the latest level for the new weapon kits, being the Light Tetra Dualies. There is a chance that the two new weapons Pain Brush, and the S-Blast 92 could be higher than level 17, which is why I would recommend grinding as many levels as possible if you have the time. If you're low on time, then you could just grind to level 17 or whatever level your desired weapon will be at. It's also important to mention that you can still buy weapons that are above your current level by either spending a gold Sheldon license or by spending three regular Sheldon licenses. In case you didn't know, Gold Sheldon licenses can unlock any weapon regardless of your level, but are only earned when you import your Splatoon 2 data when you first start up Splatoon 3. This rewards you with three Gold Sheldon licenses after you complete your first online battle, and is currently the only way to earn these special licenses, so I highly recommend to do it if you have the means to do so. On the topic of saving, I'd recommend saving as much cash as possible. With all the new seasonal gear and items coming in the new Sizzle Season 4, you will want to purchase it all from the shops whenever possible, and definitely gamble that money away on the shellout machine for the gold and silver jackpot capsules. 
It would be rather unfortunate if you did see something fresh at one of the shops only to find out you didn't have enough cash for it, so save up. The two best ways of grinding cash is grinding Salmon Run up until both of your super bonuses and playing multiplayer with cash boosting meals. The ability to just buy whatever you want whenever you want is just too good to have so that shell out machine addiction can wait a few days. Speaking of Salmon Run, playing it for the cash is great, but you'll also be polishing up those Salmon Run skills for the new Jammin' Salmon Junction map that's coming in the new season. You'll also get to try out new weapons that you usually don't use, while you yourself get familiarized with Splatoon if you're new to the game, or if it's just been a while since you played. You earn cash, you get to try out new weapons, and you get more familiar with Salmon Run, so it's a win-win-win. One thing that's not really a seasonal feature, but rather a feature that just isn't discussed as much and is mostly forgotten about, is the Wander Crust Journey Rewards on the Nintendo Switch app. A new journey releases with each new season, and they have a set variety of rewards for just playing the game. You do have to download the Nintendo Switch app on your phone and link your account to be able to access the journey and redeem the rewards. The journeys themselves contain exclusive gear as a reward for completing it, along with exclusive titles, exclusive table turf card sleeves, wallpapers, and stickers. So there's really no reason not to redeem the rewards. I don't really see anyone equipping the exclusive rewards from the journeys, though that might be because a lot of people just forgot about it, so you'll look pretty cool if you equip these exclusive rewards. All of the journeys will still be available even after the season ends, so there's no rush, but it's just something to be aware of. Actually, speaking of a feature that's mostly forgotten about, New Table Turf cards are being added in for the new weapons being released in the upcoming season. You earn Table Turf card packs by increasing your Table Turf battle rank to certain levels, increasing your catalog level, or just getting lucky in the shellout machine. Although new cards haven't been released yet, you can still prepare for it by grinding Table Turf to increase your Table Turf battle rank, which can reward you with a card pack, leading to duplicate cards being earned, which then leads them to being converted into card bits, which can then be spent into unlocking new cards. If you're super crunched on time, it might be wise to just grind table turf up to the point where you can gain a new card pack, which would be levels 3, 9, 16, 23, and 33. So see whichever level you're closest to and just go from there. And probably the most important thing to do before the new sizzle season starts would be to take a break from playing the game. It's probably important to avoid getting burnt out of Splatoon 3 before the new season releases. We're all most likely going to be grinding the absolute shit out of the game when the new season comes out, and you wouldn't want to be super burnt out of Splatoon before that happens. I myself am planning to play other games in the meantime like Fire Emblem, Mario Kart, and Slay the Spire to add a bit of variety to my gaming sessions. I'd recommend doing the same in order to add some sizzle to your gaming, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's easy to get focused and distracted with the grind of the game, but it's probably important for you and your health to make sure that you're still having fun with Splatoon 3. And that's about it on how to prepare for the new Sizzle Season 4. I'm hoping the new Splatana kit with 10 missiles isn't going to destroy the balance of the game, as I'm sure many other people are hopefully hoping for. Personally, I'm pretty excited for the new Salmon Run map, since we actually haven't had a brand new map release with the new updates, as Marooner's Bay was just a returning map from Splatoon 2. But let me know what you all think. What are you most excited for in the upcoming Sizzle Season 4? If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give the video a like, and subscribe as it really does help me out. And I do plan on doing more Splatoon videos like this in the future.